I, 30 male, and my girlfriend, 29, have been a couple for almost two years now. I thought everything was going fine, etc. We signed a lease last month to rent a home, with a move-in date next month. Last weekend, we had planned to visit her parents a few hours away. On Friday, she called me and sounded pretty upset and said she needed a weekend by herself to think and sort out feelings. She didn't seem to want to volunteer any information. I said that that was fine, and she said she would call me on Sunday or when she sorted out her thoughts and feelings. Saturday evening, I texted her. Are you feeling better? Do you want to talk? Or do you need anything? She responded with, Please just leave me alone now. I was pretty hurt by how blunt the message was and just dropped it. She didn't call me Sunday, so I let her be. Monday evening, I sent her another text asking what was going on and got no response. I called her Tuesday and my phone calls were going immediately to voicemail. I got extremely concerned, so I drove out to her apartment and noticed her car was missing. So I decided to send a Facebook message to some of her friends I knew. At that point, I realized she was no longer on my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. I sent a message to a few of her friends who I knew. One finally got back to me last night and said, I need to learn to know when I've been dumped and I need to move on with my life and leave her alone. Today, I received a text message from one of her friends telling me my ex said she convinced the landlord to remove her from the lease and she paid her share of the rent for six months out of her own pocket any of the things she had of mine were just left with my parents. Anything I have of hers can be thrown out. That's it. My parents had no idea what was going on. It wasn't my ex. It was someone my parents are not familiar with who came by and gave it to them without explaining anything before leaving. I don't understand. We went out last Wednesday and had a great time. She stayed at my place. I don't know why she was upset on Friday. Am I missing something? I feel confused, panicked, and lost. I got no goodbye. I don't understand. We probably can't help you figure out what happened, but FYI, the way our friend spoke to you was really wrong. You were totally right to be confused and worried when your SO just stopped responding to you out of the blue. Contact your new landlord to find out if her paying half of the rent for six months up front was legit. That is super suspicious to me. Oh, wow. You have no hidden stuff that she may have found out? Cheating? A kid you didn't tell her about? Massive debt? A criminal record? Honestly, I don't think she wanted to move in with you. She probably felt pressured into doing it, if not by you, maybe by her life circumstances, age or whatever. Either they or you were the side piece the whole time and she was living out this fantasy until it got too real. I'm really sorry, man, that's horrible. And that learn to know when you've been dumped stuff is disgusting. I'm not sure that there's anything to be done in this situation. But if my wife did something like this, I get in touch with her parents. Even well-intentioned friends can sometimes callously enable bizarre behavior. But her parents are less likely to be influenced by social expectations. You could certainly end up getting stonewalled by any and every person in her life. But if this behavior is totally out of the norm for her, I'd be as concerned as you are. Bullet dodged. She wasn't ready to say I love you after two years together. To me, that means she always had one foot out of the door. She was opening herself up completely. What is more, she obviously has commitment issues. She didn't start freaking out until you were both about to move in together. What she did reeks of immaturity. Instead of facing you and breaking up with you face to face, she literally ghosted you and had one of her friends do a nasty job of dumping you. That is not the mature way to handle the situation. I'm sorry, OP. Update. Girlfriend of two years is ghosting me out of the blue, a week before we're supposed to start our new lease. The entire situation has pretty much left me damn miserable and just frustrated in general. Finally, on Sunday, she sent me a very long message via email, pretty much explaining what happened. It boiled down to her wanting to try having a serious relationship with her friend. Her friend is the same person who sent me the extremely blunt message about her dumping me. Apparently, for a year before we started dating, she was having an on-again, off-again relationship with her. I never knew this, and nobody ever mentioned it. Apparently, it wasn't serious, and they broke it off because her friend got cold feet about actual commitment. I never knew how close my ex and her friend were, 
but I'm probably just dumb. She says she never cheated on me, but the night after I last saw her, her friend confessed to my ex when she heard about us moving in together. I don't know. She needed to give this a try because she is apparently in love with her and has been for years. She said she was a coward and really sorry. She also offered to be friends in the future, just not now. I rejected that. Anyways, aside from a bit of communication, we both signed a lease amendment taking her off the lease. She also sent me the money for a chunk of the rent for the year, as she felt she needed to make stuff right somehow. I will still move into the house, as I can pay the rent myself even without her help. Honestly, at the end of it all, I guess I was just way more into her than she was into me, and I never really noticed it. Although, considering how often this friend was around, I probably should have noticed something, I guess. However, I will say that personally, even before this, I found her friend to be pretty manipulative, and I doubt it'll work out how she thinks it will, but I am done with her. LMAO, when that relationship crashes and burns, because it will, remember this, there's a good chance she'll come back saying some bull about how she wants to get back together. Please don't fall for it. She cheated on you, and then dumped you, in a particularly cruel way. What an absolute gem of a human being. She'll offer to be your friend when she needs something you can provide, like someone to sponge off when her girlfriend gets sick of her crap. Take consolation in the fact that she'll be just as evil to the girl she left you for, sooner or later. They deserve each other. As for your own life, better luck next time. There are far better people to be in a relationship with. She also offered to be friends in the future. Ella Mayo, where's her self-awareness? It's so much better to find out and end the relationship now than later in life. To say it like an idiot, I'm glad your time isn't going to be wasted if she keeps being wishy-washy and is in love with someone else while you're a backup safety option. Yeah, I know a couple where this pretty much exactly happened, except they were already married with a young child and want to try to maintain some illusion of the family staying together. So now they're in a tense and awkward stalemate situation where one parent spends a long weekend once a month with their bestie turned lover who also only found the courage to admit their feelings after their friend had found a committed relationship. Please, OP, go full no contact with her. She totally had an affair because all the things she did require time and planning and maybe in reality you were the plan B all this time. My 40 male, wife 24, has never gotten along well with my daughter, 18. My wife is a more traditional kind of woman, whereas my daughter uses Tumblr, etc. My daughter is also autistic, which is completely fine. I still love her, but sometimes it causes problems. Recently, my wife and daughter have conflicted over my daughter's period pain. My daughter says she has terrible periods and needs products slash painkillers to get through them. Unfortunately, my traditionally minded wife is scared by this and regularly tries to hide her stepdaughter's products. So here comes the conflict. Last night, I had been at the office drinking with my boss until very late. There's an unwritten rule at our work that if the boss cracks open a cold one, all the boys have to join in. When I came home, I was pretty close to blackout. My daughter rushes to me immediately to tell me her stepmother had hidden her period products again. I was angry but I calmly told my wife that she had to show us where the products were hidden. Suddenly, my daughter started screaming at her, calling her a stupid witch, amongst other things. I soberly explained to my daughter that she could not speak to my wife in such a way and was grounded for a month. She ran straight to her room and hasn't emerged since. Afterward, I was very firm with my wife and told her she had to compromise with my daughter and that hiding the period products was morally unjust. Of course, she disagreed, but said she would give the products back eventually. I feel like I negotiated the situation very diplomatically, but my daughter still won't speak to me. Am I the idiot? LOL at this six-year-older woman trying to be mom for your 18-year-old daughter. You are the idiot for bringing your prize into the house with your adult daughter. It's outrageous that your wife, who is your daughter's peer, thinks she has any say in what your daughter uses for her period pain. This is terrible parenting. You should be ashamed. You're the idiot, and your wife is too. You are effectively punishing your daughter for having her period. Stop that. Am I to understand that your wife, whose traditional values led her to marry a man 16 years older than her, 
has been negatively and purposefully endangering your autistic daughter's health for years? And your reaction after getting almost blackout drunk with your boss is to punish the victim? Your daughter's going to move out and never talk to you again the moment she can. You are the idiot. Your wife is hiding medical needs slash supplies belonging to your daughter and you think they need to compromise? Your daughter's body is hers. So who the heck does your wife think she is? She's awful and you're enabling it. Your daughter does not have to compromise on her well-being and you need to grow up and be a father. Children come first and you brought her into the world and your first obligation is to her. If I were your daughter's mother, I'd go for full custody. What a horrible home environment for a teen. I, 28 female, and my husband, 29, met in college and have been married for six years. My husband was raised in a strict evangelical household, but broke away from those beliefs when we met. I thought we had a very happy marriage until my husband's father passed away in early 2021. He received a cancer diagnosis and was gone a few weeks later. My husband was and is, very understandably, completely devastated. He had remained very close to his father, despite no longer following his childhood religious beliefs. My husband decided to honor his father's memory by rejoining his church. But unfortunately, one of those churches forbids many things I find fun and relatively harmless and classifies them as addictions or tools of Satan. For example, before his father's passing, my husband and I enjoyed having a glass of wine or a cocktail now and then, maybe a couple of times a week. But after joining the church, my husband decided he was an alcoholic. He insists that I'm also an addict because I don't want to give it up. I tried to meet him halfway. I agreed not to drink at home if my husband truly wanted to have a sober household, but said I would still want to have an occasional drink without with friends. I admit I like intimate literature, which he never thought was a problem until he became religious. He also threw away my vibrator, saying it was an instrument of the devil. The latest is that my husband's pastor told him video games, all games, not just M-rated ones, are sinful. And now my husband is insisting I have a video game addiction and need treatment. Gaming is the main hobby for me, probably around 8 to 10 hours a week. It's not an addiction in my view, just something I enjoy. I work full time, cook, clean, exercise, etc. So I'm not neglecting anything else in my life except respect for my husband's new beliefs, I guess, by gaming. My husband wants me to start going to church with him. He says he will go to couples counseling, but only through his church, not a secular counselor. I told him that I understand he's grieving and struggling, and I want to be kind and supportive. If it helps, we can keep alcohol out of the house. But I'm not going to become an evangelical. Unlike him, I was raised with atheist parents, and I'm not going to restrict myself to activities he finds acceptable under his religious beliefs. I also asked him to please stop labeling habits he doesn't like as addiction. Of course, he now thinks I'm an idiot for being mean to him while grieving. However, most of our family members and friends also think I should do what he asks in the name of being supportive. So am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You've already made far more concessions to him than I feel like you need to. I appreciate he's grieving, but you shouldn't have to change your entire life to be supportive. It sounds like pretty much everything you do for any recreation he's having an issue with. It's your time. He should have no control over what you do with it. And I definitely wouldn't do the church couple's counseling. I would not trust them to have a neutral, unbiased perspective. I'd have a major issue with all of these, especially as someone who very deliberately married a man who was not and had never been raised as Christian but I'm incredibly shocked that he thinks he has a right to control what she reads. That's so far out of bounds for me that I would honestly walk if my husband started to tell me what I could and couldn't read. My parents never controlled what I read at any age. I certainly wouldn't allow another grown adult to dictate my reading material. I read a lot and there's no way on earth that what I read can or could in any way affect my husband or his boundaries. Not the idiot. I agree that couples counseling is in order, but it must not be through his church. That's an instant and automatic two against one situation. It would be best if you had an impartial counselor, and that means a secular counselor. Sadly, you probably need to consider 
that your marriage may be nearing its end and prepare yourself for life without him. You didn't mention any children. I hope that's because there aren't any. Just confirming no kids. Last year, we discussed starting to try sometime in the next couple of years, but we agreed to put that on hold indefinitely. We aren't intimate at the moment, anyway, due to his grief and his addiction recovery. The abstinence isn't forever, but his church's program requires a six-month abstinence period, even from relations with one's spouse, to reset. What? Having intimacy with one's spouse isn't an addiction. Unfortunately, that church is doing a number on him. I'd use that six months to formulate an escape plan, honestly. This is a serious situation, and the sooner you get out, the better. Do you have someone who can hold your valuables that are now sinful? I get documents in a safe deposit box as well. My sister's getting married in a month, and she just now announced that her wedding is going to be child-free. I don't mind the idea. My wedding was child-free too, and I believe in child-free weddings in general. But the thing is, I'm a mother of two kids. One of them is two years old and heavily disabled, and I can't afford to find care for her. The other one is barely a month old. To explain some things, my sister lives eight hours away, and that's where her wedding will be. So she'll rent out hotel rooms for the main family members, parents and siblings of the couple. We'll spend three days there, one day before the wedding, the day of, and one day after. The hotel she booked also has a no-kid policy, so anyone in the family with kids should hire a babysitter for those three days. I wouldn't mind hiring a babysitter, but it's a last-minute announcement, and in my area, it's nearly impossible to find a babysitter who can care for a special needs child and a newborn. Also, I can't be away for three days for my newborn since I have to breastfeed. My husband and I discussed that either he or I should stay behind with the kids and one of us could attend the wedding. I could leave some breast milk in the special bags in the fridge for him to give our newborn if I went to the wedding. We thought that this would be a good compromise. When I told my sister she got mad, said I was not thinking of her special day and demanded I find a babysitter and we come as a couple. So I asked her what her deal was with me attending the wedding alone and she didn't explain clearly. She just said I'm an idiot for even daring to think that not attending the wedding as a couple with my husband would be acceptable. I told her I was sorry for that but that my kids' needs come first. I respect her decision and rules about the wedding but it's a last minute announcement I can't find a babysitter right now. I've searched for endless hours, so this solution was my last resort. And since the hotel has a no kids policy and I can't bring the kids to the hotel, at least so they'd be near in case of need, then one of the parents stays behind. If they were allowed in the hotel, I wouldn't have trouble finding a babysitter for a few hours, but a whole three day weekend is impossible. My parents have told me I'm TA for ruining my sister's wedding but I can't understand how that would possibly ruin her wedding at all. I told them that since she had a child-free wedding, she should expect that some people might not be able to show up and that not everyone has the money to give a babysitter every time they're invited to a child-free wedding and she should be okay with people not coming if they can't. Am I the idiot? Your sister said you couldn't attend the wedding alone and that the hotel is also child-free. What is that? You came up with compromises and she stumped on them. She has basically engineered her wedding so that unless you output a significant amount of money and leave your kids with a sitter for three days, you can't attend. That's harsh. Not the idiot for you, but your sister? Not the idiot. You can't bring them to the hotel. They have extra care needs, which you can't accommodate because she announced this super last minute and you can't attend alone. So, what on earth does she expect you to do? Seriously, what does your family think you should do? Because at this point, I feel like the only option they left you was leave the kids at a fire station. The only reason I see her maybe having an issue is if her decision has already made a lot of other people back out and now your husband. This can cause some issues with catering and venues with minimum guest requirements. Don't sweat it. Do what you have to do and they can be mad. But it's your kids' health, safety, and needs first. Bottom line.